So I'm a business developer at Corp Academy. Corp Academy is a Swiss startup. We are based at the EPFL in Switzerland and Lausanne. And we are providing a digital learning solution mainly to big companies and big organizations. And we are doing a lot or we are believing strongly in the personalization of the e-learning experience. That's a bit our background. But it's not about Corp Academy and it's not about me and it's about you and your inputs and your thoughts. I would really love to have a lively discussion. So please, if you have any questions to start the discussion, I would um, ha make just a quick introduction and I would love to share with you an example, which I think in my point of view illustrates quite well what has happening during the last years and is still going to happen in the next years. So if you look at the example, it's the example of the Formula One from the pit stops. Do you know what the pit stops is? It's basically where they get more full, where they do um, reparations, etc., during a car race. And 60 years back, a pit stop took um, 67 seconds. In 2013, the same pit stop took three seconds. Just to give you an idea, and I think that shows really well how things or how the speed has increased over the last years. And if we see that, for instance, through a lens of learning, we can observe or also what, for instance, the WEF, the World Economic Forum shows us is that there are going to be around roughly around um, 75 million of jobs which will be destroyed during the next years. But at the other side, we will also have around 130 new jobs which will be created. So this means the gap between these two figures, we have new jobs and we need to train upskill, reskill people in a very efficient and quick way. And I'm quite convinced that linear models, which we have nowadays, or which we have known in the last few years, they are not able to, or we are not able to manage with those tools and methods this, this increase. We really need to have some new methods and models to make sure that people can acquire the skills they need. And with, within this whole transformation, we also make, have to make sure that we respect and we meet the specific need of each learner. So that was a bit a quick introduction um, why I would love to talk about this subject. And I have prepared two like questions for you. So the first question would be quite general. I would like to know from you or I would like to, to hear your concerns or pain points about personalized learning today. Where do you see that there are problems? Do you see, do you think that learners get exposed to too many questions or too many learnings or it, are there not enough learnings? Do the people have problems by selecting what they should do? Or do they maybe have too, too much freedom? So I would really love to hear your points on that or your thoughts on that and inputs. And where you, what we could do in order to uh, basically uh, yeah, destroy those pain points. So discussion up to you. <laughs> Let's see what the chat. Hi everyone, you can either um, type your questions on the chat or you can um, use your mic, whatever is more convenient to you. So any thoughts about it? And do you have any experience? Do you have experienced a, um, a personalized learning? Yes, of course. So my question would be or is, uh, what are your current pain points on personalized digital learning? So where do you see problems within personalized digital learning? Have you experienced something where you thought, okay, that was not a good experience in personalized digital learning? If you, for instance, are a learning and development manager, do you think that, that the learners get exposed to too many courses or not enough courses? Or um, do they don't have the freedom? Should they have more freedom to select the subjects they would, they would do?
Okay, I can read that people exposed to too many poor quality online learning opportunities combined with a lack of direction. And yeah, yes, I, I agree on that because it's very hard for as a learner to 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 know what is the quality of especially if it's a if it's a new subject, if it's a new skill you have never learned, heard about, how should you be able to assess the quality? And I think, and that's the second point, lack of direction, yes, you definitely need to help support the learners, at least in the beginning, in order to get used to it. Definitely, I agree on that. Experience personalization, okay. Yes. Yes, that is a bit with the MOOCs, massive open online courses. The personalization is a bit poor at the moment, yeah. Okay, not enough assembled, not cataloged offers. Hello? Yes. Is it, is it the audio going on? Yeah. Oh. So do you have I'm, a question? Or yeah. I might, I might say, sorry, I may say that I think there is a lot of offers in the internet mm -hmm. for, for learning for people who want to learn something. And my experience is it's really hard, if not quite hard, to find the real direction where you can learn, where mm -hmm. I can learn something special. I mean, for example, let's, let's see something like human behavior on the internet. They want mm -hmm. to learn on human behavior. If I look on Google, if I look on that, to, to go or bing or whatever the search engine is it, I cannot find a real index or catalog of courses mm -hmm. which can um, make the path of the direction to learn properly. This is my only concern on our days on learning. So, it's too much offer and too much yeah. unassembled. Yeah, so you would really need to have kind of a real catalog where you could go through it and see under this point, behavior, um, human behavior, you will find this, 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 the course. That is what you would need. You would need to have a guidance. Yes, yeah, so we, we, should, we should say there is the need of, the need of a guide, of a universal guide yeah. of the learning courses, yeah. the languages, the matters, and experts with, who are working on the courses to yes. accompany that. Yes. So out of that, I have a question again, or... Um, do you not think that somehow we also a bit self-regulated that we also you somehow need to set a goal first in order to make the correct search for the topic you are looking for because if you know that I want to learn something within human behavior that is your goal and I think that is very important as well that you really know where is my goal where do I want to go what do I learn from it yeah I know the first thing it's this is personal this is not of the internet the people know they make people meet meet the goals and know what they want to learn we we have to know what we want to learn before we have to search we start the course this is the first thing mm -hmm. how this is uh, exposed or present I, i'm not pretty sure how we should how it should be so people just get it as quickly as when you install an app and just put the app and you just get what you want Mm. But I think e-learning should should work in the same way that you just get a button, you press the button, and you go into whatever you search or whatever you need. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that is basically what you also do, like in, in the in the marketing field. That the, basically the system should get you to know in order to also help you with this direction. Now, if I understand you well, uh, you say that the system should, be like. I mean, an artificial intelligence system should bring you a path so you can see the path and you can make the choice of your goals. Is that right? Yes. With over the time, that should be, in my point of view, that should also be a name. Yes. That That's is what good. we see. Yes. So, of course, you always have a, like when I do in marketing, I would like to buy a red dress, but then the system over the time gets to know that body likes red dresses. And that will also happen within the learning to to avoid that you are overwhelmed. Right. This is the thing. And how can we make a proper discrimination on good or bad dresses? On good. That or is 
bad red dresses. <laughs> that is what the system has to learn over the time. And that is also what we can see what, what people do. We can right. we can see on our system where are pe where are people curious about to know more and suggest them based on that new topics which are in relation to what they have already done within the whole uh, platform. Um, one more thing we have, sorry, um, we have uh, Liz, she raised a hand, so maybe we can um, yeah. Yeah. let her address the comment. Yes, of course. I won't use the video because I'm not dressed for video. Um, the, I, have a, a, I have a problem with too much personalized learning, to be honest, because, yeah. I mean, I worked for an institution where we were given learning and development goals each year. So you would have a discussion with your line manager as to what kind of training you need in order to do your job better. It may be that there would be certain non-official um, training, or it could be in management of staff or whatever that people might think was necessary. But you don't come to these decisions, I think, entirely on your own it generally um, unless you're working for yourself mm -hmm. if you're working within an institution then you have um, you're motivated by doing training that is going to advance your career expand your knowledge and mm -hmm. then you put it into practice in your experience so yeah. you need to have some kind of guidance from the people you work with for that I definitely agree on that point and that is also what we observe within our company and I would maybe if I look at the chat we have a question from Dijan saying is personalized learning do you also mean personalized learning path and definitely it also kicks in with the personalized learning path so whenever your employee says you you have to reach this and this objective so you have to do this and this learning then maybe it's not that personalized, but at the same time, there is the next level, which is basically the learning path itself. Because maybe I love only to watch videos and maybe you love to answer questions. And a third person loves to do only five minute nuggets every day. So I think personalization kicks also in on the level of how we learn because we have all specific needs how we learn somebody loves to learn in the morning somebody in the evening and i think this is also what we have to take into account when we talk about personalization what do but you I think you but you could cover that i mean by but once you've decided what it is you need to cover i mean i, I don't know whether you deal with the same sort of subjects as we do in diplo but if you are teaching some kind of marketing or human resources or um, digital skills or whatever it might be. And if, if we're looking at an e-learning um, system, then obviously you will choose what times of day that mm. you will log on to. You will see from the course curriculum whether it's got videos or webcasts or whether it's mostly written material. So from yeah. that view, you can choose your... Yeah. You can and? choose your style. But what I'm not sure about, because this is supposed to be new approaches... What is different about your approach? Yeah, so I can tell you a bit because... What are you doing in Diplo, for example? Sorry for interrupting you. Um, I don't want to talk too much about us, but what I can, for instance, say, because we have developed together with the EPFL in Lausanne, we have developed an instructional design, which within the learning path, so when you do a course and I do a course, we will not have the same experience because the system detects, for instance, are you an expert on... Um, I don't know, digital skills, and I'm a beginner, I have no clue about it. So you will have another experience than I do, because we want to make sure that people don't get frustrated and I don't get overwhelmed with stuff I don't know. And we take it to the next level in the sense of that research sees that if you are answering questions, for instance, and you answer them 85% correctly all the time, that is a good I would say that's a good average on percentage that you answer correctly. If you are higher than 85%, the questions are too easy. And then you also get somehow frustrated because it's too easy for you. And if you are lower than those 85%, then it's too difficult for you. And then you also get frustrated and you might stop the e-learning because why should I do it when it's so hard? And what we want to introduce now is that we evaluate each question and we say, okay, 
each question get a kind of a ranking in the difficulty, if we can say it like this. And we see during the learning pass if the learner is doing better or worse than 85%, and we will expose him to the question based on his score to make sure that the person doesn't get frustrated. So that is what we, what we, for instance, at Corp Academy do in terms of personalization. But I don't say that this is the right way or this is the only truth. I think there are many other inputs and I'm really happy to hear what you were saying. Any other comments? Any other? I don't know how much time do we have? Like 20 minutes left? I think we're maybe 10 minutes left. 10 minutes? Yes. Okay. Are there any others? Otherwise, I would love to move on to the second question, if that is okay for you. There are a few questions on the yeah. chat. Um, I can see them now. Yeah. Okay. Can we combine personalized learning with social interactions? Yes, we can, in my point of view. Um, there are several possibilities. So, for instance, what we what you can do is that you can offer a possibility to have um, coaching on the platform itself. So that will be, for instance, through a live chat. Um, you can have exchanges, um, for instance, on peer-to-peer -peer level, people sharing their experience on a forum, asking questions, statements, etc., and people can reply on that and can reply to that. Um, you can also have games. So gamified aspects has also so social interactions. So I can play a game and by answering several questions and I, I send an invitation to play the same game to a friend of mine and or a colleague of mine and she or he will also uh, respond to the same questions and we can see who did a better job, for instance. So there is definitely possibilities to have some kind of social interactions as we also see the social interactions on social media, for instance, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Is the new approach is meant to totally replace the role of coach mentor? No, I definitely don't think that those new approaches should, should replace anything. That is, that is for me clear. I think that we need a, a balance of both, which means that I think there are some points where digital learning is it may be more effective because it's once one size fit all doesn't work for everybody. But I think we also need the human interaction with a coach or a mentor to discuss, maybe not the knowledge transfer, but to discuss role plays, cases, experiences, concerns, etc. So no, it's, it's not going to replace in my point of view. How well a forum discussion works in different learning having years. Um, forums doesn't uh, work quite well. It depends on the population. So it depends on the group of people who are communicating together. If it's about a subject where people can have a lot of in experiences because they are working on the field, or they have some interactions with other human beings, and I would love to share that, then forums are really working well. And people have this, I don't know, they need to, to exchange and they need to share their experience. Does it pose a problem in the case that, that it is a company or a culture which is not used to that? Then you would need to train that. And then we would really need to push or boost it. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, we have uh, less than five minutes left, so I suggest okay. we move to the second question. Yes, uh, we will move to the second question, and maybe it's just for you also to, to have some brainstorming afterwards on the second question. So I would love to know if you have any ideas or how you would measure the success of a personalized digital learning. Is there, do you see any possibilities on like KPIs, also key performance indicators? How would you measure that? What, what does a success in personalized digital learning mean for you? Any thoughts, inputs, questions? Maybe I've, I can give a quick input because mostly we were tracking in digital learning if just a progression. Has person X, Y completed a course? And I think Yeah, so I'll just complete on that what I was saying. So 
And it's not, maybe we were just tracking the progression, but I think it goes a bit further than that. So what we could see is, again, a KPI of a success could be um, a net promoter score. So we, for instance, we are measuring something called NPS, net promoter score, which means how highly would a person recommend this course to another person, to a colleague, to a friend. So this is very important to see how well is the course perceived. And then you have categorized, you, you categorize it between zero and 10, and then you have the scale. So this is, for instance, something that we do. Um, so we have a question, is success uh, of personalized learning different from success of another learning? No, not necessarily. The, the thing is just how you can measure it. Maybe you can measure it in a, uh, you can measure it in a, in a different way, in a digital way, because in, if you are in a classroom, you might just get a feed, you, you might just get a feedback with a, with a questionnaire at the end or something like this. And with the digital, you can track a bit more. You can see how did the person um, complete this module? Did the person do it by answering all the questions or watching just the videos or et cetera? Or um, did you look at the behavior, for instance? Was the person only involved into social learning? And, or is it a person who completes one course in a row? So the person starts the course and finishes the course, or does the person stop between small or make nuggets out of it. So there are different things you could measure. And the question is, what is a success for a digital learning? Is personalized learning more expensive than non-personalized learning? Mm, no, not really. I would not say because it's mostly you have to develop the algorithm to personalize it. But then it's whenever the algorithm is developed, then it's working on its own. So it's not really that more expensive. And I think you should also look at the output and not only what you invested in, but what is the output you get out of it? Are people more engaged, etc.? So I think you need to look at both sides. It may not be much, but... Um, just a small reminder that this room will close in about 15 seconds. So. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much for all the interesting questions and inputs and concerns. And um, if you have anything more, then please don't hesitate to contact me.